in our building, back and in person service. Amen. The choir getting together and uh, you know, if you haven't sang together in a while, we have to, you know, get back used to things. Get things back operating smoothly. But we thank God for our choir, amen. Thank God for each and every one of you that have gathered here today. Amen. God is a good God. He's worthy of all of our praise. Amen. I was leaving out of the house this morning. I was collecting all my wife. So you got two. You got so much stuff going on. All the different horns and different stuff. And, and I was bringing out all my stuff and putting it in the truck. And, and then I realized as I was getting ready to get in the truck and take off, I, I left my Bible and my notes and everything. And I said, like, wait a minute. I done left something. I got the horns and all that. But I left the most important thing. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's some things you just shouldn't leave. <laughs> And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes, just bear with the preacher just a little bit. Let's go to the book of Revelation. You don't hear a lot of preachers preach out of the book of Revelation. Amen. Some people say it's a scary book, but it's not scary. Amen. It's the book of hope. It's the book, come on now, somebody. That would let us know that if we do the right thing, if we love the way God would have us to love, if we examine ourselves and consider our ways, Amen. We'll be all right. Amen. Amen. The second chapter of Revelation. Now the Bible is talking here about the church of Ephesus. Amen. Just to give you a little background. The church of Ephesus was a beautiful city. Amen. It was a, it was a chief city in the, in the area of the province of Asia. And they basically, if you was to say it in today's language, they had it going on. Amen. Both the religious and the commercial center of the entire area. Amen. There was business going on all around. Paul made would visit uh, Ephesus, amen, quite a bit and minister there quite a bit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Would you stand at this time? I'm getting ahead of myself. Stand at this time, we're going to open up with a word of prayer. Amen. That song just gets me, I'm telling you. That song gets me. It's all about falling in love with Him. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we praise your holy and righteous name. I ask, Lord, that your word in my mouth today is going to your word, Lord. You be lifted up. You be glorified, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. I ask you to word my mouth today. What to say, how to say it in the spirit of love and meekness, Lord, that it might reach the hearts of those that hear. Lord, you be lifted up, and only you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you give me clarity of speech and explanation. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You all may be seated. I'm going to have you seated. You be seated. Amen. And we, I was talking about the, the church of Ephesus and how that this was a flourishing city. It was like the place to be. There was a lot of activity going on in, in this place. But there was a church that was there. Amen. And Jesus was very concerned about the state of the church, just like God is concerned about the state of the church today. Amen. You don't believe me? Come on, somebody. Amen. Uh, God is not pleased with going through the motions of church. And one thing I love about God, God is not a God that just come to beat you down and make you feel bad. Although the preacher can't get up every Sunday and preach a happy, because sometimes we need to find out where we are. Yeah. And sometimes we need to be in a place where we should uh, examine ourselves and see whether or not we're still in the faith. Or whether we're just going through the motions. And just going through the motions won't get you there. Right. Amen. I can stand in the dugout and sweep until I get up to the plate. And when the ball is pitched, 
I got to hit the ball. I got to get a base hit or a double or a, hopefully a home run. But you ain't gonna get nothing just going through the motions. Y'all bear with me just a little bit. Hey Amen. I'm gonna read here. It says the Lord, he speak, he's speaking to the church. And in, in this particular city now, like I said, there's a whole lot going on. And the midst of all that was going on, there was materialism, there was degraded animalism, there was base paganism, there was dog heathenism, and all kind of stuff going on. Amen. Right in the midst of this great church. Come on, somebody. So I'm going to start to read at that first verse, and we're going to see what the Lord got to say about it. What I love about God, God is one that will, he'll tell you what you're doing right, but he'll also tell you what you're doing wrong. Amen. Because he wants us to make it. It's his desire that we make it. It's his desire that we be encouraged, but at the same time, amen, we need to know where we're going wrong. Amen? So it says here, unto the church, uh, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, is right. Talking about the preacher. Come on, the minister. These things say, say if he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven uh, golden candlesticks. Amen. Unto the messenger. Amen. The preacher. Amen. Come on, somebody. Because if the preacher ain't right, Come on here, I don't know what the scriptures say. Huh? Like, like priests, like people? Like people, like priests? If the, if the head ain't right, guess what? The whole body going to be messed up. Yes. So Jesus is addressing, amen, the preacher here. Come on, somebody. Now, and he's judging the church. But at the same time, he wants us to be encouraged. Watch this. Watch this. In, in, in the second verse, he says, I know thy works. How many know that he knows our works? Yes, we can go through the motions all we want to, put our Bibles on our arm and sing our songs and preach our messages and teach our Bible studies and do all the things that we do. All oh, that's good. Amen. But God said, I know your works. Uh-huh. And thy labor. And what did I talk about last week? He said, we have need of patience. And he said, and patience. And thy patience. Right? So the patience is always mentioned in the Bible because without patience, you ain't going to make it. Without patience, you won't give up. Uh, without patience, you're going to start tripping along the way. Amen. And we're going to venture, we're going to uh, uh, swerve away from the things of God. Y'all stay with me now. We're going we're gonna to make this as plain as if God can, as, as I can comprehend God has given it to me. It says, I know thy works. And thy labor. God knows everything you're doing. He ain't forgot your, your, your labor of love and all these things. So right here, he's commending, he's commending the church. He's commending the, the pastor and the people here. And and and, and thy patience. Yeah, yeah. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil? Yeah. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles yeah. and are not. You can't believe everybody and everything. Come on now. And has found them liars. Come on now. In other words, you're doing that right. Here it is again. And has and born and, and has patience. There it is again. And for my name's sake, have labored and not has not failed. Come on here. Don't faint. Hold on. Keep waiting on the Lord. Keep trusting the Lord. Come on here, somebody. Now watch this. Watch this. He said, when you labor at something, that means you're putting forth some, you know, it's one thing to work, but when you labor at something, you're working hard. You're breaking a sweat. And so God is commending them for laboring in the gospel, for doing that which is right and pleasing in his sight. But watch this. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Watch this. He said, Nevertheless, well. little work to do it good. You, you love it, folks, and you're trying to do that which is right. Preach out on your heart. I know the, the labor that you put into the work. I know all about that. He said, but nevertheless, I have somewhat against me. See, everybody always want to hear the good news, but you don't want to hear the 
bad news. Sometimes when God, people don't want to ask you nothing, when they, when they know that you're going to give them, a, give them an answer that they're not going to be satisfied with. Because sometimes that answer is not what you want to hear, it's what you need to hear. Come on here, somebody. And so as, as the preacher, amen, it's not always easy because uh, sometimes people like to be accepted. There's a, there, is a, there is a disease that goes around sometimes that's called the disease of, of approval. Right. Well, I have come to a place, I'm almost 70 years old in a few months. And I have come to a place that the only person I'm worried about getting approval from is the Lord. Because people will change on you. Come on now, everybody ain't gonna like you. Everybody ain't gonna like what you got to say. Every message ain't gonna be a shout out message. But what I love about God, He will encourage you and then He will turn around and correct you. Come on here. He said, but nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Now that's plain as plain can be. Because thou has left the first love. Come on, somebody. It didn't say, now you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth on me. And I've heard other preachers say, he said, we lost our first love. The Bible don't say you lost your first love. The Bible says you left your first love. There is a difference. See, when you lose something, you can't find it. It's out of sight. Come on now. But if you left, I left my, I left my, my, my stuff in the house. I knew where it was. All I had to do is go back, stay with me, is go back and get it. Because I left it. Come on now. When we feel away from the word of God and the things of God, we leave our first love. I remember when I first got saved. Oh my goodness, I was on fire from God because I was the devil's advocate at one time. Don't get mad at me because you know you were too. When you was in your sins, you know you was pretty bad. You was pretty rough. You did some things that you know you shouldn't have been doing and you kept on doing it anyway. The Bible says he didn't know to do it, do it. He didn't know to do it and, and do it and not to him and his sin. So if you were doing some things just like I was, don't look at me all cross eyed and you know you was supposed to get saved, you know, you're supposed to love the Lord, but you kept on doing what you were doing, and you kept on getting what you was getting, until you got tired of getting what you was getting, and then you finally decided to come to the Lord. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. See? It's a left that first love. What's that? You, you, you had to have it in order to leave it. Watch out. So here's my point. In saying that, sometimes people pretend as though they have it. They act like they have it. They go through the motions of having it. But when you love somebody, and when you love something, come on here now, it's valuable to you. It's not just something that you talk over in the corner and not place any importance on, uh, over it. You know, I got my keys. Uh, to drive my truck home and so those keys that's going to get me from A to B they're very important to me. Yeah. Come on now. So if I leave them somewhere before I can go somewhere I got to go back and get my keys so y'all ain't hearing me so I can go somewhere because the key is what's going to start the truck up in order for me to go from A to B. But if I left them somewhere, I gotta go get it. Some people have left their love. They left their love in a, in a, in a pool of selfishness. They left their love in a pool of unforgiveness. They left their love in a place where everybody's the blame but me. They left the, all the principles and things that God brought and, and, and imputed in you. You see that woman sitting right there? That's my wife of 46 years. In August, 47 years. And I come so much. It's all right, it's all right. And I can truthfully say that I love her just as much, if not more, today than I did when I first met her. You see, because my sister, because when I first met her, I did not know her like I know her now. I did not, and she accepts me as I am. I don't have to put on no show. I don't have to do anything to try to impress her and for her to stay with me 
Stay! 
and you'll end up with nothing. If something needs fixing, you've got to do something to fix it. Call somebody. If my car breaks down, I got to do something to fix it. I can wish it would run. I can say, come on, baby, start. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Start for me now. Start for me. But if there's something wrong with that a connection, y'all can hear me. If there's something wrong with the connection, if I'm not getting a spark, come on, somebody. If the electrical part of that car is a power source and disconnected, it ain't gonna start. I don't care how you wish it will, it ain't gonna start. So what I'm saying is, some people have left their first love, and so the only way to get back right is to go back and get it wherever you left it. Wherever you left it, go back and get it. Yeah, he'll take it from you. He'll try to take it. He'll try to take it. But he can't take it unless you let him have it. I'm going to say that again. Anything that God has given you, the devil can't take it. You have to relinquish it. You have to give it up because he can't take it if God gave it to you and meant for you to have it. I'm on so far. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. The fifth verse. The fifth verse says this. Remember, therefore, from which thou art fallen. See, when you leave your first love, you're in a fallen condition. You're in a place, watch this. Now I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings, but I got to tell you the truth. Some folks used to do more than you're doing now. Well, you're going backwards. Well, we're doing more now than we were doing then when we first began. Like I told you, I love my wife more now than I loved her before I knew her like I know her now. Come on here. When you love somebody, you want to be with them. You want to be close to them. Watch this. You want to please them. That's the, that's the ingredient for a happy marriage, for a worthwhile. But you know what the problem is in today's society? People are looking for love in all the wrong places. If girl, is he tall? <laughs> is he handsome? Is he this? Now watch this, this is an important one here. Is he got a good job? Yeah, what kind of car he drive? Somebody say he drive a BMW, a Beecher Monday, a BMW, Beecher Monday, Wednesday. Come on now. <laughs> you think you got something. But you better check and see what's on the inside. You better check and see if it's a good person. Come on now. If you'll leave that love, that's what divorce is about. Show that quiet in here. It's so quiet. Church miles, go back where you came from. I can hear you checking it off the floor. But it's the truth. Some things you got to work at. Some things in life you got to make it up in your mind. Aunt Helen, I thank God for you. When I look at you and I see strength, and that strength is in my blood. Come on, somebody. She know I love her. But there's a certain strength that she possesses that blesses me. That causes me to say, I can do this if I want to. See, you gotta have a want to in you. I wanna be saved. I'm gonna be saved. And, then, and with 
everybody the tenacity to get up even when you don't feel like it. To desire to be the best that you can be. And even in that, I've fallen short of many a times. This preacher prays on a regular basis. Now, somebody going to look at me straight, but that's okay. I pray the prayer of repentance on a regular basis. Because you see in the scripture, the Lord commended the church first. But he said, but nevertheless, watch this, there's always something that we need to work on. If it's our patience, if it's our commitment, if we fall away from the thing, come on somebody. When we, we used to be more active, we used to be that person that said, I want to do, what do you need me to do? Pastor, what, what is it? What can I do? You know, the, 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 the talk about the gifts. And the one that in my mind, the gift of helps. But don't nobody want that one. That one ain't popular. That one don't carry the prestige as a prophet, as evangelist, as the teacher, as the pastor, as the all these other titles. But the gift of helps, you can't do nothing by yourself. Come on here. And the evidence of that is this. You take a man Put him on the island all by himself. Come on here. Let's say it's an island that was once inhabited by the richest of all riches. All types of money, cars, and everything. Everything at your disposal. I promise you, after that little glory day of, of uh, trying everything out and you know, they got Rolls Royces over there, they got Mercedes, they got Lexuses, and they got any kind of car you want to drive, and all you got to do is walk in there and just pick the one you want. But you're going to get tired of that. Yeah. You know why? Because you ain't got nobody to share it with. You go all the way back to the book of Genesis. Come on now. God said, it's not good that man should be alone. Come on now. I'm going to make him a help. I'm going to give him some help. All the other animals had somebody to be with and talk to and everything. And here I am walking around there looking crazy. Come on here. Don't tell me God ain't concerned about us. So God said, I'm going to send him some help. And in that, and that's going to help fulfill the whole total plan anyway. Come on now. But you can't do nothing by yourself. And what we need to understand is people, and I call it humanity. It just tears my heart out when I see the, the, the hatred and the bigotry and the, just the chaotic thinking of people in the world today. And, and, and it's only getting worse. And it's not a doom message, but I'm just telling you that the love of God is what we're going to have to have. We're going to have to be in love with Jesus. Amen. And we're going to make it. Because if we're not in love with him, we're going to get sucked into some of this crazy that's going on in the world today. You're going to get sucked into it to a point where you think that you got to do that in order to make it. In order to be accepted. I'm not worried about being accepted. Except being accepted by God. Because he is the only one that matters. Come on here. Some don't like him, some not. Depending on where they are in their life. Depending on what they have that they don't want to turn loose of. Come on, somebody. I remember before I got saved, I was sitting and hearing the message and, and the preacher would be preaching and he would just seem like he was zeroing in on me. And I was just so glad when he got through because my conscience was whooping me. Because I knew that my grandmother had instilled the fact that I needed God. But I didn't at the time, just like today's society, I didn't want God yet. I wanted 
but to still continue to do what I was doing because, let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me help us out. Sin can be pleasure. Sin can be fun. But it ain't never good. In the end, at the end of the day, come on now, we're going to have to come to ourselves. Remember the prodigal son, he, he wanted his inheritance, he took it early and, and left out and went and did rises, living and partying and, and having a good time. He's the life of the party. Some people want to be the life of the party. Everybody likes it because you're buying all the drinks. You're supplying all the drugs. Come on, somebody. But when his substance wore out and ran out, they turned it over. Now you read your Bible. Say, he couldn't get no help from nobody. Come on now. The life of the party. And that's the way it is. So we should spend our, our time and our energy striving to please God. Now watch this. And I'm almost through. Watch this. If we as people will strive to please God, we won't have trouble. Come on now. With each other. Amen. If we would not leave our first love. Our first love says that no matter what I'm going to love you anyhow. Yes. And ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm going to love you if you're just not to cuss me out. Now you say, oh, I'm not preaching you. you just saying that you're going, but I'm going to tell you something. If God said it's possible, read your Bible. Philippians. Come on now. I can do all things. Through. Through. No, no, all I got to do is have no money. All I got to do is have some kind of car. All I got to do is have a title. And everybody like me and talking about me and all this. But it says, through Christ. That's how you can do all things. That's how you're able to love somebody that don't love you back. Come on, somebody. That's how you're able to love somebody that's
that needs to come back. And get your first love. That's the love that God intended for you to have. That's the love that God intended for you to keep. And when I'm at my lowest low, Lord, I still love you. Can't nothing separate me from you. Come with me. I'm going to love you anyhow. I'm going to love you anyway. That's how we make it to him. That's how we, we, we survive our marriages. Come on here. I told y'all, I tell you again, my wife and I, we don't always get along perfectly. But I know we love each other. I know that. Just like she gave me that look that day, now she gives me another kind of look. She don't think I'm looking at her, but I catch her every now and then. And that encourages me to keep on keeping on. She'll walk in the room, I might be praying or something, or studying my word or whatever, and she, I ain't like I don't even see her. But I know in my heart of hearts that, that that must give her a feeling of security. Because she knows that if I love God, then I'm going to love her. I'm telling us how to fix some stuff. Some of us have been going through emotions and struggling with things for years. Putting on a facade. Putting on a show when we out in public. But I'm going to tell you this, if you can be saved at home, if you can be saved when ain't nobody looking, you ain't trying to impress nobody, you can be saved anytime and anywhere. I'm talking about truly saved. Truly saved. And I don't know about you, but all you got to do is turn on your TV you see the things that's going on, and most of the news is bad news. Ain't no whole lot of good news these days. And it seems like the glory in the bad news. Come on here. They keep bringing up the bad news. Now watch this. The Bible says in that seventh verse, He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He that have an ear, now I will lie. Everybody don't have an ear. But he didn't have an ear. Here. Let God hear. The scripture says, Jesus, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And a lot of people like to associate that with just people that are not saved. But that's for everybody. That's for you and that's for me. Because at any given day, at any given time, you can be in a different place than where you are today. In other words, you can love the Lord today and you can run for Him. But something can happen in the midst of it and cause you to leave your love somewhere. Cause you to, He said, remember from which the place from where you fell. Remember where you came from. 